And the, the, uh, the reason I said is partial. Remember, we have the word defer in iPhone. You, sometimes you may want to defer or delay some implementation for later, in which case you only have partial implementation. That's why I said partial here. So, because in iPhone we do support the ideas about pre and post condition and invariance, so it is actually more likely to actually have a way to check to see if our implementation correctly implements some ADT. And ADT somehow is actually, uh, you can think of that's translated from your requirements because that's mathematical. So it's precise, it's unambiguous, and it should be complete. Okay? So we'll see examples very soon. Okay, so we can talk about this next time. So, so here it's just a hierarchy for the ISO. So just remember at the top, we have any. Okay? And this, okay, this is something to, yes. Is this any means in Java is like a, a object. object? Exactly. That's exactly the way to see it. I'm sorry, what? So objects in Java is like any in iPhone. Because you see that it's actually at the top of the hierarchy, right? Yes. Yeah, um, talking about Java, it wasn't an ADT more like you had to like implement the ADT of like some data structure. So I don't know how like a, a class is an example of the ADT. Good, good. We'll see. Uh, reserve that question, and then we'll see. Yeah, mm -hmm. we may not see that in full detail today, but certainly uh, next time. So now, let me ask you this. So this is a typical API for Java here. So it might be too small, but let me read it quickly for you. So this is about the interface API for map, which, which is parameterized by K of B. So K of B here is like the G we have uh, seen before the break. So this guy here says, okay, this paragraph here tells you what roughly the put feature, what put method is going to do for the map, which is going to add some pair into the map, and then what are the parameters, and what's the return type, and what's the possible exceptions you might be thrown. Okay? This is API. <coughs> Imagine that if you're a very new user of Java or you know nothing about map, if this is the other information you have been given in order to use the code or the facilities provided by map, would this be sufficient enough? Because it's, first of all, it's in English, right? Although you have some Java uh, words there, but it's basically English, and so it's informal. So it doesn't really have a precise characterization of the behavior of the uh, feature or the methods there. So this, this is why I said Java interfaces are not ADTs. And Java classes are not ADTs either, because in some way, of course, what you can think of the classes in iPhone and Java, we are trying to increment the ADTs we have in mind. We're trying to satisfy some mathematical uh, requirements, right? And either the way you do it in Java, it's hard to really tell if you really have implemented the ADT correctly. But in iPhone, because you have contracts, so you can actually specify your expectation between clients and suppliers as contracts, so you can uh, check them at the runtime. So that's really the crucial difference between Java and iPhone, although they're both OO. Okay, so the, the main message for this slide is to say Java interface, although it might be informative, however, if you're a completely new user who knows nothing about the uh, collection or this feature here, then it doesn't really help too much. You might have some basic understanding from the English, but you may not be so precise or you might even uh, misinterpret the English here. It's very possible. Okay, so now let me uh, bring this slide. So this is this might be something a little bit new to you about abstract data types, but this is not iPhone yet. So this is only about the uh, uh, the the goal of the iPhone classes or Java classes. So for example, if you've got some ADT written down or defined they might be realized by either Java classes or IFO classes. So they are simply mathematical. And after data type is a mathematical model for data types, where data type is defined by three things. There are three things you should put into the uh, ADT. We have the example for a step in the next slide. So you should have to say operations, like a method or feature you want to support. For example, for stack, I want to support push, pop, top, etc. And now behavior of these operations. So in this case, in Java, 
what's really the behavior? How can you derive the behavior for the push pump and uh, item? How do you tell the behavior? Look at the code, right? Because there's no pre and post condition. There's no contract view in Java. The only way you can look at that is to go to the source code for those methods and see, okay, this is actually how they implement this particular method. So that should be the behavior for the, uh, for the method. But it's way too low for the uh, level of abstraction. The behavior in IPO, on the other hand, we actually specify by using the pre post conditions and invariants. So that one is actually much easier to understand, a much higher level. Okay? Of course, in IFO, you also have implementation. So you can always check your implementation against your contracts. They belong to two different levels of abstraction. Okay? Properties are certainly something that you may not have seen before. So imagine that you have a stack which supports push, hop, Let's say only push and pop. What kind of property would you expect to observe from using push and pop? I'm trying to use it, okay, just in general. So for example, one example could be if I try to push something into the stack and I do an immediate pop, I would get the original stack back. Agree? Okay. And Give me one more example. Otherwise, we cannot go home. <laughs> okay, yes. If you push into a full stack, you shouldn't be able to. Yeah, that's how you violate the precondition. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. That's, although it's not really, yeah, there's a precondition. It belongs to the behavior part of the uh, ADT. It's not exactly property. The property is like, uh, like you say, like an equation, uh, like a equation. Uh, I'll show you. Don't worry about it, you can still go home, but I just need more slides. Okay, so ADT of mathematical, not OO. And, okay, exactly, so a class and object. Let me just show you this slide. This will be the last one for the day. Uh, this one might take 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll make it for Okay, we will go into details next time. But what I want you to see, please do this for me uh, before next Wednesday. Try to read through this slide only, okay? Try to see how you can understand that, okay? I will only focus on the, uh, uh, maybe uh, some axioms today. Try to see if you can understand that and see how different it is from the normal iPhone classes or Java classes you will have, okay? So here, you can see that we are saying that if we are trying to put x, okay, I'm talking about A1 over here. I'm trying to help you read this. So if I'm trying to put x into a stack, this will return back to me a new stack. And now, in the new stack, the top or the item should be the x. What does that mean? Given any stack right here, if I try to add something here, and that something should be the new top. So that's the top property. Okay? And for the second one, we're saying, for the second one, we're saying we if we try to push onto the stack and then pop it, so we get the original stack back. You can see here, S and S over here, they actually match. Okay, you can see it's a different style of specifying the behavior than OO. Okay, that's why I want you to struggle with that for a week, and then I'll tell you more about that next week. Okay, one more before I let you go. So let's say, so here, what does that mean? Tell me, what does that mean, A4? You. Mm. Yes. The start one? A4. What does A4 mean? Uh, not empty. I mean, it, I think it means if not empty, they put ice on X. No, no. No? <laughs> That's okay. Uh, actually, that means. Yeah. Uh, oh, they do A4. So whatever stack X is, whether it was empty or not empty, when you put X in it, it's already not empty. Yeah, it's so, guaranteed for any stack. So empty would be empty of that would be false, and not of that would be true. Action. Correct. Correct. What? So that's basically to say, given any stack, let's say for empty stack, you put you put one element into it, it will be not empty for the resulting stack. Even for any non-empty stack S, if you put something into it, because it's already not empty. Of course, the resulting set will be non-empty as well. Okay. Mm -hmm.
So one more. Okay, Chris, A3, and then we'll go on. Uh, any new stack will be empty. Good. Exactly. So new is actually an operation for stack. Okay, so tomorrow we have the last <laughs> one. Oh,